Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Munch, munch, munch. Hello and welcome to Daddy Eats Last, where we discuss the challenge of being a man in modern society and whatever the hell that even means. I'm Kane, and joining me this evening is Maddie and a very oh, happy and festive Ryan. How are you doing, Ryan? Good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, doing well. You're in a very festive mood after doing some clothes shopping today. I am. I had a lot of luck at um, shopping, consolidating the wardrobe, trying to minimise it down. Got some very nice pieces. Which, as uh, you men can probably attest, clothes shopping, can you can have some wins and then you can have an awful dreaded time. So luckily I was on the win. Excellent. How's your weekend, Manny? It was good. We went shopping as well, but for uh, different things, Christmas shopping, and it was very, very frustrating, to be honest. We um, sort of didn't get as much done as we thought, but we were dragging three kids around, so it was, that was the reason. But apart from that, um, just doing a lot of, Shit around the house, mate. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> my dad came around yesterday and was uh, doing something on a the pergola, as my little fellow likes to call it, the vergola. Uh, my dad was putting a couple of planks up on there while I was at the front, basically, uh, yeah, just not weeding, but doing stuff in the garden while the little fellow was taken to a farm with the uh, the missus. So they had a grand old time sucking back slurpees and you know taking selfies and stuff and we're just slaving away here at home but funnily enough it's sometimes the easiest way to do things actually go listen you guys go out i'll just do stuff around the house because it's the only way things actually get done sometimes as well because having a little fella around who always wants he's going through that i want to help phase is uh decidedly unhelpful anyway we on to more interesting and fun things than that or i guess you know it might not have been fun last week, Ryan, because we're going to discuss your Spartan, a 50K uh, Spartan race you did last week. So maybe a good starting point would be why? <laughs> uh, I don't know why, actually. I, I'm, we've been, I've been doing it with a friend of mine, uh, one of my best mates, Sean, for six years now. Uh, we, do, we do a number of Spartan races. It started six years ago with, I think, the... 13k one and then since then we've done every single race including uh what's known as a trifecta so for those who don't know what a spartan race is um it's basically an obstacle race out in the bush so think of trail running hills climbs those kind of things uh with a bunch of obstacles so climbing up ropes throwing stuff um lifting 50 kilo medicine balls and walking them down doing a heap of burpees uh but a lot of climbing stuff so we decided to tackle the biggest one which is called the ultra beast so a beast is basically a half marathon uh with all these obstacles and the ultra beast is 50 odd kilometers or thereabouts uh with 60 plus obstacles in country victoria climbing and that we ended up climbing and hiking about five different hills uh, during the race. So that's how I spent my weekend last weekend. And it took, we've got a 14 hour cutoff time to complete it. So 50 Ks in 14 hours doesn't sound very much, but we're both pretty fit. Um, only 250 people did it. And we came in at 13 hours and 15 minutes or thereabouts. Uh, with a number of people trailing behind and also a number of people actually not coming in within 14 hours. So for all of their brutal blood, sweat and tears, they get a did not finish, uh, which is very heartbreaking for some of them. Ah, That sounds a lot like my university career. Well, you straight through (laughs) Just get through, barely just, just make it through in the nick of time or sometimes not quite getting there. But now you've had an interesting, I'd say six weeks, you had an interesting six weeks. You've been, got engaged, you've done the Melbourne Marathon and you've done a 50k Spartan. Which one has been the most mentally and physically draining? Yes, well, I got engaged six months ago. Um, oh, sorry, you had engagement, engagement party. party. Yes. party. Yeah. Mm. Which, which of the um, three is the, mo- <laughs> the most mentally and physically draining? <laughs> I have to be careful what I say here, clearly. Uh, so, yeah, five weeks ago I ran the Melbourne Marathon, or five weeks before the Spartan Race, I ran the Melbourne Marathon and then the Spartan Race 50Ks. 
out of all of them, the Spartan race, the 50K one was the most physically draining. So that was the most, um, and I I suppose going back to your question, why we did it, Mm. um, it was the only race that we hadn't done. So that whole kind of thing of, well, it's the only thing that we hadn't conquered. Um, And we've done every other race for a number of years now. So it was sort of like, all right, well, time to step up for this. And then deciding to run a marathon was kind of the perfect cardio base for a 50K trail event. Um, So I'd say the Spartan race was definitely the most physical. The marathon, without a doubt, was the most mentally challenging. Um, And even though it was not nearly as physically challenging as the, the Spartan race, because you've got obstacles and all these things to break it up, Whereas a marathon, you're just literally running for 42 Ks. Um, and that can be mind-numbingly boring as shit and very mentally challenging. Um, and then the engagement party would slot in probably as the most stressful though. So <laughs> the um, we had a pretty big engagement party um, and sort of pulled out, pulled out a number of the stops, which was really good great fun had an awesome awesome night um it was definitely the most expensive out of the three but uh yeah it it was also probably the most stressful just coordinating all the plans and we uh both our families are from interstate as well there's a lot of friends in that so we were very very fortunate to have many people come over but that just adds another level of logistics uh yeah so the spartan physically the marathon, for sure, the most mentally, and then the engagement party was very stressful. But I'm sure just a precursor to what a wedding will be. Yeah, I think you've you've very you've answered that very well, especially with regards to the engagement party. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so now that you've done the 50k Ultra Beast, are you done with Spartans? Are you going to do another one? You've, you've conquered everything. Is there a point going back now? That you, oh, why would I do a 13k one now? I've done a 50. Is 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 this part of your life over? I don't know. Actually, I haven't. It felt really weird finishing the 50k. We were driving back the next day, um, and could could barely walk for the next three days. So got some very weird and wonderful looks and questions and comments from a lot of people. Um, but, yeah, we were driving back talking about it going, are we sort of retiring now that we've done every single one of them? Um, I suspect I'll end up doing another one because I just I just find them fun uh, in, a, in a weird way. Maybe not the 50K one, but definitely like a 13K one's pretty fun. Um, but there's no rush to the next one. So when we started six years ago, it was like, okay, we'll do this 6K one or the 13k one and then we did the the sprint one which is like the 5 6k one and then we were like after a few years of just doing those ones we're sort of like all right well let's do the half marathon one and then in country victoria they have the where you can do all three of those so sort of the 5 6k one the 13k one and the 21k one um over the weekend so you do the 13k in the morning five in the arvo and then sunday you do the 21 was known as the trifecta so we did that for a couple of years in a row uh, which was pretty challenging and then yeah decided to tackle the 50k one so i'd say there's no rush to do another one um i probably will because i enjoy them but i'm probably now looking it yeah it feels a little empty because it's like oh great now what um because my buddy summed it up really well when we rocked up at 5 30 a.m on the sunday morning to start the 50k one and he was like this is probably as close to you know professional athleticism as we're ever going to get um because they 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 do they do um have a lot of respect for the people that tackle the 50k one and they do treat you and like even the people that are doing the 21k one when they get on the track uh, when they see you, you're wearing like this purple vest, they get out of your way, they cheer you and all these kind of things. So, yeah, he sort of summed it up pretty nicely. Um, so, so I don't know. Receive that level of respect that you don't in any other walk of life. 
<laughs> you should wear that, try to wear that vest to work or down the street, uh, down Burke Street in Melbourne and see if you get the level of respect there or if people just look at you strangely. <laughs> you do, um, they, you get a shirt when you finish these races. Um, just wear that yeah, on casual. Yeah. Just wear that on casual Friday. Just walk in and just kind of uh, puff the chest out with the fifty uh, k Spartan uh, shirt on. I, I am definitely thinking about it because, um, yeah, they're actually really good gym shirts. So that's why I like getting them. But I'm thinking of wearing it, yeah, on Friday, just rocking up and being like, "That's right, I am better than you." So <laughs> <laughs> I might just see if I can just buy one on eBay. Well, that kind of defeats purpose, and if you, if, if you, how about this? If you want to do a fifty k one, I'll come out of retirement for you. Ah, uh, that's a very noble and kind offer, Ryan. But I think I've retired from any sort of obstacle races after I did a three legged race in about year seven. <laughs> so yeah, I think um, the search is actually on. The search is on for what's next because I, I guess a bucket list was always still marathon. And then my buddy was like, well, we haven't done this 50K one, so we better do that. And now it's kind of like there's a little bit of a void to fill sometime. I don't know. I turn sure 30 that- next year, so I might have a 30-year crisis and try and hike Everest or some shit. I'm sure the guys at Spartan will be um, coming up with the, with the next big thing after the 50Ks. There's got to be a whole heap of people like you, mate, that have done the 50 and now they're just empty, empty shells. Oh. I think there is. I think there's there's this whole when you hit that, you end up finding about this whole community of like ultra um event people where they do like hundred kilometer runs and trail runs that are like eighty Ks and all these different weird and wonderful things. Um I think fifty K is my limit, so I'll probably I said to TK over the weekend, I'm like, I'm really going to enjoy just the next couple of months of the year not having anything crazy on a weekend. Um, also, with these events, you've got to spend so much time training. Like with the marathon, for the eight weeks leading up to it, there was two to three to four hours um, pretty much every Sunday that I had to dedicate for training to it. Um so I said to TK, I'm just really going to enjoy just doing some like high intensity training, short classes and some yoga because I'm now as stiff and tight and short as a 50 year old um, after the 50k race until the end of the year. And then we'll see what 2020 brings. So was it the challenge of this, the challenge of you know the marathon and then the challenge of the 50k race, which is, I guess, drawn you towards it because i guess it gets back to that why like you're trying to understand why someone would do this outside of i guess the challenge and then maybe the sense of achievement once you complete if you do if you do complete them you don't get a dnf is is that what it is i think so yeah it's the it's the challenge of just pushing um pushing my body further than what it has gone before which is really enticing um i suppose i I probably played some pretty high level sport when i was younger um and decide like actively decided not to go down that path but still love fitness and hence why i probably wound up in health and all those kind of things um so yeah just the the opportunity to i guess try and push the body and we there were a number of times in that 50k race where we were um possibly thinking that we weren't going to make it because not only do you have to make it within um the 14 hour cutoff time but there's also time periods as well so they start cutting people off at two so if you if you haven't made it to what's known as a transition area which is about after 30 k's um where they kind of give you a little tub where well you can basically place a tub so you put some gels in there you put some food in there you know Powerade or whatever um and you pretty much have this transition area you put a change of socks or we did anyway that was very helpful um if you haven't left the transition zone by 2 p.m they shut the gate and anyone who hits it's taken off the race so you've just done 30 k's and and that's it you finish there and then there's various other things where you've got to be here by 5 p.m and there by 6 30 etc 
Um, well, I think it's your next challenge then. Just do the next, do an ultra beast without putting anything in the transition zone. Just go, oh, I don't need anything. I'm just going to go straight through. I don't need any gels or new socks. Boom, straight through. I think that's just brutal. Um, I think the elite people do that. The people that there's genuinely, like there's prize money and everything. So the people that come first win like a couple of, I think they win like 10 grand or something like that. There's a whole circuit with this. I mean, where me and my buddy are just kind of, amateur with it but um what was winning genuinely time? a whole national seven just i think just over seven hours was winning time. <laughs> that's, that's insane um yeah absolutely brutal with the with the hill climbs and that that you have to do so but i think going back to your point it, it was just genuinely what started as a hey this looks like a cool jimmy kind of and and one of the reasons that um my friend and I have probably done them for six years is one, it's an awesome way to stay really connected and really tight as friends, like something, you know, you, you share an experience like that with someone. Um, but it, and, it, and it's also a good way to stay fit and healthy. But we also find the races, not necessarily the 50K one, but the other ones somewhat therapeutic because you're out in nature, you're pushing your body, um, doing all these things that, you know, for someone like me who predominantly works in office type roles, you don't get to do. So, yeah, it's just that challenge and that sense of achievement. Like when I crossed the marathon, you know, you get a bit like got a bit teary at the end of that one because it was so mentally taxing. Um, the problem is like where does now where does it stop? So I'm hoping to change my thinking and find something that doesn't involve 13 hours or mm. four hours or that kind of something that is a little bit more time efficient, uh, especially when I have kids. Yeah, is, mixed uh, nipple is the solution, is a I goal. think, Manny. Mixed nipple? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's only an hour of your time, Ryan. You don't, don't, have to, don't have to train for that. So, I do like the mixed nipple, so I yeah. like that. Well, is there an obstacle within that 50K? It's like 50K itself is, a, is an obstacle in itself. Was there a particular yeah. obstacle in your 50Ks? Because I'd imagine it's a circuit, so you see the same uh, obstacles maybe a couple of times. Is there a particular obstacle which is difficult for you or causes you issues? Yeah. Um, climbing up the really steep hills is a pain, um, but that's not necessarily an obstacle in itself. The ones that <laughs> I predominantly have problems with um, so the rope climb has always been a very painful problem of mine. Um, kind of to my own ignorance, I suppose. I haven't learnt the technique properly. So I pretty much can't use, when I climb a rope, I'm no good with my legs. So it's all arms. And the second time around when you're about 40 k's in, uh, I got agonized. I got it on the first time, which was great. And then I got agonizingly close, literally probably just needed to go up one more hand. Um, But my body gave out and I fell probably from about seven meters height, which was not fun um, when you've run 40 odd Ks. The worst thing is, though, if you fail an obstacle doing the ultra beast, you actually are punished with 30 burpees. So after climbing that rope and agonizingly seeing the little bell to hit and getting so close to it and then falling. Um, I had one of the supervisors or whatever joyously come over and count 30 full-blown burpees for me, which was painful. <laughs> you, um, fell, you fell seven metres into onto the ground? Yeah. No, it's padded. It's padded. So it'd be about five, six, seven metres, the, the rope thing. I'm um, just thinking about the height that I am. And... So that one was always been a problem for me. The other one that gets a lot of people is, so you have to do a spear throw. Um, and if the spear throw doesn't stick, because, I mean, how often do you practice throwing a spear? If the spear throw doesn't stick or hit the target properly and stay in, um, you get 30 burpees, which is lovely. So if you're off center or whatever. So I got one out of the two times that I did that. And then by the end... There's um, a hanging, like there's a ring one. So there's like a monkey bar one, which is fine and that's good because you can essentially use two hands. But then there's a swinging ring one where you basically can only have one hand on the ring 
and you swing yourself forward, grab the next one with one hand. So you're pulling your whole body with one hand. Um, and yeah, by the end of it, which was, that was one of the last ones, the body was just cactus. So I pretty much got halfway there and dropped and got to enjoy another 30 burpees. But most of them weren't too bad. I think I ended up doing about 150 burpees, which isn't that bad across 60 plus obstacles. I, I actually now on the basis of what you've just described with obstacles, <laughs> this might not be the best fit, but I think I've got your next thing. What's that? <laughs> Australian Ninja Warrior. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am um, short and sharp. Doesn't go for fifty k's. It's you know three minutes or something, and just you know, nail it. We have um, my friend and I have actually thrown that up, but I think they're. I don't know. I've watched some of the people that do that, and I think they're just at that next level of fitness above me so I'd, well maybe it is the next thing maybe it's something to focus on but there's the um australian spartan that's on seven mate as well that's very different to these spartan races it's actually the same organization which is good but it's very different because you don't have any of the terrain and you're not out in bush or anything like that which does make it harder i think but me and my friend have been trying to find a third people because you've got to do that in teams of three, a third person that is keen to do that show. So if there's anyone listening that's super keen, we uh, we need a third and then we'll definitely jump on that one. Well, if you, if you don't think you're going to be, you get your third person, you're not quite fit for Australian Ninja Warrior, you could always look up Total Wipeout, the UK show, where they jump on big red balls and fallen water and stuff like that. <laughs> you'd be your prime candidate to win that. But I think you have to have some sort of cheesy, cheesy entry line at the start. That you're know, Ryan, I'm a physio, and you know I'm going to, you know, massage my way through this uh, particular obstacle course. <laughs> I'll let you craft that, and I'll jump on the show if there's some prize money there. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, um, maybe Australian Survivor. That might be an idea. That oh. could be a bit of fun. Well, you've got the spear throwing down pat, or well, mostly down pat, yeah. and no one's going to tell you to do thirty burpees if you don't spear a turtle or something. <laughs> And I don't think I've got to climb too many ropes there, so I should be all right. But I think one of the really nice things about it is, and one of the things that has probably kept us doing it for so long is definitely connecting um, as mates, which is really good. It's also a really good way to keep each other accountable to stay fit during the year because there's a, there can be a fair bit of time between these races and you know that if you're running it with a buddy, um, they're keeping fit. So you're not necessarily training together, but it's kind of that accountability piece going, well, I can't rock up to this thing underdone if they're pretty fit. Um, and me and him work really well because he's probably better than me with the upper body stuff, but I've got a better cardio base um, and definitely better uh, distance wise than he is. So I can help him pace it and all these kind of things, which is good. Um, but I think the other thing is there's, there's a therapeuticness to doing these races. I'm not suggesting that 50K is therapeutic, but for anyone out there who's thinking about it, definitely try like a 5K or a 13K one because just getting out in the bush and sort of running in a trail and doing a few obstacles and there's a massive sense of um, community and camaraderie with people that have dumb enough or crazy enough to do these events so there's yeah there's a really good health benefit i think to doing it which is probably what's kept us doing it for so many uh years now yeah i think it's that 30 does that 30 burpee penalty apply to even the, the shorter races too ryan or is it just the, the ultra beast it, it does the 30 burpee penalty applies to the shorter races however there's um so TK did one of the 13K ones with us, but you can essentially not do the 30 burpees on those ones. Yeah. So, so it applies if, because because again, there's, there's those races that have the ultra brackets or the elite, sorry, the elite waves that they call them, um, where there's prize money for when people win and all that kind of thing. And if you're competing or if you're competing on a circuit, then you've definitely got to do all the 30 burpees. Um, but, you know, most people will just kind of do 30 squats or they just sort of do 10 burpees and that's okay the 50k one 
there's people that watch you and there's actually cameras. So for every burpee that you don't do, uh, there's a 30 second penalty. So they're genuinely, if you come in at 13 hours and 50 minutes and you haven't done one lot of 30 burpees, let's just say that you went nuts, stuff and I'm not going to do it, you got a 15 minute penalty there. So you actually then result in a did not finish. Sucks to be you. Um, wow, but the hardcore. other races, they're much more lenient. Much did, more lenient. So you're saying that TK did TK do the burpees in her one? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's, she, I, uh, so obviously, why you went ahead well. with the, that's why you went ahead with the relationship. Ultimately, she did her burpees. <laughs> we had to we had to go through one. She actually got really done. It was the year where they very poorly measured the track. So it was supposed to be 13 or 14 Ks. Um, that year, they poorly measured the track and it was probably closer to 17. And this was her first one. So <laughs> she kind of got done over, but she's got um she's got a cool Spartan gym shirt that she uses with her 13 Ks. That's awesome. That's oh, yeah, it's fantastic. And like you said, like actually doing it with your, your other half, that's like, yeah, a great thing to do. Yeah, and then she very much just enjoyed chilling. Um, in bright the next day when I did the 21, 22K one, where she was just sitting around with her shirt, enjoying the coffee and mm-hmm. the town. Beautiful. Now, in the in our haste to get to the Spartan stuff today and talk about the 50Ks and the challenges of you doing that and the marathon and those sort of things, we missed our dad joke of the week. Um, who's up for the dad joke of the week? Um, I'm, I'm happy to go. I've got one in the pipeline here. Well, just before you do, Matty, I had a little trick today, which uh, if anyone has a Google Home, you can actually ask Google, you can just say to Google, hey, Google, tell me a joke. And they are pretty much exclusively what I would consider dad jokes. So I think next week we might have a, um, a joke from Google, but this week we can go with you, Mr. McTyre. No, I must confess this one is from Google. Um, we've also got that Google Home. Some, some of the jokes are pretty pretty average. I think if you want a good joke, Siri has got some great knock-knock jokes, but... I think you can, also, you, can also ask, you can also ask Google for a dirty joke. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, Are we doing should. that after this? <laughs> Don't wake the kids. <laughs> um, all right, I'll fire away with mine. Um, what do you call a caveman's fart? A blast from the past. <laughs> oh, yeah, that great? I don't mind Fantastic. that one. <laughs> I quite like that one. God, <laughs> that that's very awful. But good, <laughs> awful in a good way. Well, on that note, that wraps it up for this week. Remember to subscribe to Daddy X Last on iTunes if you haven't done already. And while you're there, please leave a review. Also, tell your mates about the podcast, especially if they are guys. And if you have a dad joke, just send one in. It can't be any worse than that. Most of all, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week for another episode, or should I say serving of Daddy X Last. How's that for a dad joke? Yeah, not as good as the uh, blast from the past. Catch you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.